Hey guys, Epicenter Brian here. Today is National Record Store Day and in honor of that I decided to put together a little video to show you how a stereo record cutting head works. Now the movements that are involved are very very small and the movements happen so quickly you really can't see them. So I decided to rig up a little demonstration unit here and uh, this uses uh, servo motors uh, to simulate the movements that are going to be involved in cutting a record and uh, it's actually run by an Arduino processor here and then there's also a knob in the center that allows me to change uh, what section of the software is going to run so that I can demonstrate all these different movements and uh, we can go over those. Before we start the demo uh, let me point out a few things now first off, the head itself would normally be mounted on a record cutting lathe and when the time comes to start cutting, the head would be lowered until the stylus starts cutting a groove and then as the record is cut, the head would be moved very slowly. Now in this situation, uh, this is just bolted down to a record uh, for demonstration purposes and display purposes. I also want to point out that the movements that you're going to be seeing are very, very exaggerated. Okay? Now, this uh, part up here is representing the cutting stylus. Obviously, that's very, very large. A real cutting stylus looks like this. It would be pointed down. And uh, this is so fine that you can really only see this with uh, a microscope. So anyway, all the movements are very exaggerated as well. Um, and so anyway, now pretend like this is in the, uh, the surface of the disc right now and that the disc is rotating, okay? And there's no audio being applied, so the cutting stylus is just cutting straight down perpendicular to the disc. So over here, this represents what the groove would look like, okay? The black is the disc itself. And uh, the two different colors here are representing the left and the right channels. So let's go ahead and uh, get into this demonstration. The first uh, thing that we're going to do is we're going to demonstrate how the right channel of the groove is modulated. Um, and to do that, it's actually the left driver that causes the movement to create the right side of the groove. Okay, so I'm going to reach over here and activate that mode. Now you can see this is moving at a 45 degree angle. It's not exact because these are servo motors that are actually rotating, so there's a small angular error here, but for demonstration purposes, I think this illustrates how this works. So on the groove itself, you have this motion like this at a, at a 45 degree angle, and it results in a straight groove on this side, and it basically is cutting uh, deeper here and narrower here. So this is representing the change in the depth, okay? And you can see that this side of the groove is now being modulated by this 45 degree motion. Okay, now when we look at the other side of the groove, it's the exact same motion, of course, except we're now cutting in the left side of the groove. So the right driver is cutting the left side of the groove. Here is another motion. Now this is called lateral movement. And what it's doing here is it's cutting a mono signal. So this is, this is lateral motion, which is equal to the left plus the right channel. So this is actually a mono signal, um, the same signal in both both channels right in the center. Okay? This is what's called vertical movement and this is the difference between the left and the right channel. So we had the lateral movement and that's the sum of the two channels and this is everything that's different between the two channels. Now this creates a groove that looks like this where it gets very narrow and then it gets very wide. So as this is moved away from the disc, the groove gets narrower, and as it goes deeper into the disc, the groove gets wider. 
Okay, now this kind of motion is necessary to get the, uh, the right and the left channels onto the grooves, but it also needs to be limited um, because too much of this vertical motion can actually cause the stylus to pop out of the groove. So the mastering engineers typically uh, are very concerned about this kind of motion and they um, apply all kinds of tricks and black magic as well as the guys that are actually cutting the disc. And generally a lot of this up and down motion is involved with low frequencies um, that are out of phase. So low frequencies uh, have really large movements on the disc. So if there's a lot of program material that's out of phase in low signals, uh, low frequencies, typically what they'll do is at some point they'll take the low frequencies and they'll sum them together uh, to mono so that it minimizes this, this vertical motion. We had a little uh, problem with the camera battery, so hopefully we've got enough juice now. Let me just show you a couple of other motions. This one here is a circular pattern, and this is kind of nonsense, but I just wanted to demonstrate that all of these motions in this whole hemisphere are possible. Um, now this next position here is totally random movement. This is kind of like what would happen when you cut uh, a noise source onto disc and you can see that there's lateral movement, there's vertical movement at the same time. This is actually being generated by uh, random commands to the servos uh, to move random numbers of degrees. In the next section we're going to talk about the components that are required to make these motions possible. Now I've taken this assembly off so that we could take a look at some of the parts and I've disconnected the connections here uh, from the servo motors. This part here does several functions. It's called the torque tube and it provides a connection point for the, for the uh, drivers up here. Now they wouldn't be connected like this, but this was an easy way for me to put together the demonstrator. It also provides a, a place for the stylus to be held and that has to be uh, removable so if it gets damaged uh, or wears out you can replace that. And then the torque tube also connects to this V-shaped spring in the back. I think you can see that there's a gap there, okay? And what that spring does is a couple of things. Um, it allows motion in all direction because it flexes, and I think you can see that with the reflection here. Um, that spring is very thin in one direction, but it's much, much wider than it is thick, okay? And because it's connected at these two points, it prevents the stylus from going out of perpendicular to the surface of the disc. So this is kind of impossible for me to demonstrate, but you can't rotate this stylus, and that's exactly what you, what you want. You don't want this to go out of exactly 90 degrees to the surface of the disc. Okay, so that's accomplished by this spring and the torque tube. Um, now, one thing to notice is, let's see if you can see that, here we go, is that when the disc is rotating and it's moving away from the stylus and the stylus is in the disc cutting a groove, it tends to want to try to pull this stylus forward. Okay, can you see that that gap gets bigger? This is actually moving forward right now. Okay, to prevent that motion, there's another part that's not installed right now, and that's this. It's a, it's basically a spring. This is a piano wire, and this would go between the end of the torque tube here and the body of the cutting head. So I'm going to just show you how this would go, but anyway, for demonstration purposes, I have a hole here uh, where I can insert this. I'm going to push this through to the back 
the piano wire has been installed now and again this wouldn't actually go through the entire torque tube it would be connected basically back here somehow on the inside of the torque tube and then it would run back and get connected uh, somehow to the body of the head now you know I just have this pinned uh, with a couple of collets but this will at least demonstrate now um, okay now when you see that I pull on this stylus that piano wire is preventing this from moving forward and I hope you can see that um, but it still allows movement in all directions because it's still flexible now of course it's not connected here so that's wiggling around as well but anyway that's how that works alright one other thing to look at this is really what a driver looks like it's kind of a kind of like a speaker without a cone so the function of this is not to move air and generate sound, it's to move that torque tube and the stylus, okay? And when a couple of those are mounted uh, to make a head, this is a homemade one that I'm working on, um, looks like this and you can see that they're mounted at a 45 degree angle just like in that video. If you have any interest in uh, this kind of stuff and you'd like to learn more, check out the website called lathetrolls.com and I'll put a link down there for the epicenter.com I'm Epicenter Brian signing out